What is a rangefinder camera? How does it work? And why did it change my life? Today I want to talk about rangefinder cameras. What is it? How does it work? What is zone focusing? By the end of the video you will know why moving to rangefinder cameras changed my photography and actually my life. It's not a technical video that shows the mechanism, I just want to show you how it works and why I like it. The first rangefinder cameras came out in 1936 and was by Zeiss Icon and it was called the Contax. Other brands like Konica, Cosina, Voigtlander, Epson and Olympus for example adapted that system. The most famous rangefinder camera of course is the Leica M system. How does it work? So you have two windows here. You have the viewfinder and you have the rangefinder window. When we turn the camera and look at it, we see here the viewfinder. When you look through the viewfinder, you're not looking to a lens. See, I have no lens mounted yet. So when you mount a lens, let's do that. When you mounted a lens and you turn the camera on, you can see frame lines that basically show you the border of your frame. Within that frame, you can compose your picture. Those frame lines depend on the focal length of your lens. There are different frame line pairs, actually, you can see. The 35 and the 135 mm, the 50 and the 75 mm, and the 28 comes with the 90 mm frame line. If you have, for example, mounted a 35mm and you want to check if this is your right focal length or if you should maybe change the lens, you can easily display the auto frame lines. You just push the thing what Leica calls the image field selector, you just push it towards the lens and then you will see the different frame lines. So there is one of the big advantages of a rangefinder camera. Because you have the frame lines, you see actually more than your final picture. For example, if a car approaches and you want to have the car in the middle of your frame, you see it before it enters the frame. If you want to have a person out of the frame, you can see and take the picture before the person enters the frame, for example. You can see more than if you would look through the lens. Okay, so finally, how does focusing work? Um, this is not an autofocus camera, it's a manual camera. So you need to turn your focusing ring on the camera. These numbers, I'm gonna talk to you about those numbers a little bit later when we're talking about zone focus. So basically here, you turn this and you set your focus. Let's look through the viewfinder again. In the middle, you see what Leica calls the metering field. I call it the focusing field. Why? because when we look at the Leica SL2, which is a mirrorless camera for a moment, you see we have um, a focusing field here as well. This we can move around. With the rangefinder cameras, we cannot move that around. It's always in the middle. So if we want to have something in focus that is not in the middle, we have to move the camera. We cannot move the focusing field. The focusing field mirrors the focusing point through this window. When we look again through the viewfinder we see that it is a superimposed picture in this little rectangle. To have a subject in focus we just need to turn our focus ring on the lens until the superimposed pictures are exactly covering each other. Then you're in focus. When you start out working with a rangefinder camera I would recommend to do it on buildings where we have clear structures. You have, for example, a vertical line and you just need to find the point where the lines are exactly um, covering each other. That is uh, good on windows or on like end of buildings. When you then progress and you do portraits, for example, then you can look more on the whole situation within the rectangle. For example, if you have an eye, that it has to completely, the superimposing, go over each other and cover it exactly, then you're in focus. First time I had a rangefinder camera in my hand, I was like, wow, this is very complicated and this is going to slow me down a lot because I cannot, I, I like to be fast, I see something, I need to take the picture. 
You can also have that with the rangefinder camera. It is actually the fastest camera you can have because you also have zone focusing. I'm going to explain that now. Zone focusing is you have on your camera, you have this, this scale. It shows you your apertures. And here on this scale, which I'm turning, this is the focus ring. It shows you the distance from the chip to your object. So you have the close focus on this lens is 0.7 meters. If your object that you want to have in focus is like two meters away, you just need to turn it to two meters. Now what is zone focusing? Zone focusing depends on the aperture you're using. For this example, I go for an eight, which you probably won't do, but it's the easiest way to explain. Now I'm gonna check here my scale. Where is the eight? Eight is here. So I put eight on infinity, okay? Now I can see on the close focus side, I can see on the other side, I can see eight here. It's between 1.5 meters and two meters. What does that mean? It means that everything between 1.7 meters and infinity is in focus. You can just now walk the street. Of course, with an aperture A, you need enough light, but you can just walk the street now. You can compose your picture. You don't need to think about focusing anymore. When you go, let's say, to an aperture of four, of course, this range is gonna get smaller. If you go infinity on the four, which is here, then you're gonna have five meters until infinity. So you just need to be sure that your objects are further away than five meters. Or if your object is closer and you say like, mm, I wanna have my objects two meters, I go with the five, six, for example, and I'm gonna set the five, six to two meters. I see now that I can have anything between five, and approximately four and a half, five meters will be in focus. Zone focusing works best on a wide angle lens. The wider, the easier. I did a video about a 12 mm Voigtlander lens where I also talk about zone focusing. So maybe you check this out. I leave a link in the description. My use, I do it with the rectangle. I do every picture I take. I'm gonna set my focus because I like to shoot the wide open aperture as possible. It takes a little bit of getting used to, but once you have it, it's really, it's like you have muscle memory in which direction the focus ring works, and then it, it's actually, you're, pretty, you're getting pretty fast. I do, for example, portrait shoots. I do also with the M, and then I use mostly the 75, and just need to tell your object just to hold still. Then it's no problem at all. It's harder if you want to take pictures of your cat or your dog, because usually they are like moving around, and then that's, that's tougher then I would suggest you go to zone focus. One important thing to know is keep your windows clean. And I mean the viewfinder window and the rangefinder window. Because if they're not clean, if they have like fingerprints on them and it happens, the superimposing effect, it's not gonna be as contrasty as you need it to really see the focus. If you're shooting with a rangefinder camera and you're like, ah, I don't see my focusing points, first, clean those windows. It's probably 90% of the cases this is the issue. If you ever feel that you're perfectly focused on your end, but the picture is not in focus, that can happen too. Then you need to calibrate your rangefinder. There are videos on YouTube where people show you how to mechanically calibrate your camera. I would not do that. I would always go to the Leica store and have them do it. The problem is they're going to send it away, but because it's such an expensive piece of gear, I would never like do it myself. So why did it change my photography and my life? Um, it is because it slowed me down and it's less forgiving. And we're not taking as many pictures as I used to take with fast DLSRRs because then you just point and spray. <laughs> and with this, you really think about the picture you're taking. You see something you want to take a picture of. You look through your rangefinder, see your frame lines, and you decide, this is going to be my composition. And then you need to decide, this is my focusing point. And then you maybe need to move away from your composition to take your focus, and then you move back. And then something changed, and so on and so on. So it really slowed me down. But what it also did while slowing me down, the whole process of taking pictures became more 
of an enjoyment for me because I, I was just searching stuff differently because I had, all of a sudden I had more time and because I needed that time. And it really calmed me and I appreciate photography more because the whole haptic thing with working with those kind of cameras because you, you do all manually and you kind of have another connection to the things you are taking pictures of. It's a little bit like shooting on film, even though it's digital, you're shooting less pictures because it just takes more time. What I can strongly recommend is buying one of those covers if you have a rangefinder camera. So let me show you how those work. Put them on. They, of course, protect your camera, but what they also do, and this is a creative thing for me, they cover the screen of the camera. Of course, you can hold that down and then you can see the screen, but when you have it like this and you're taking pictures through the rangefinder, it's an experience like it used to be with film. It's a little bit more challenging, it's a little bit flying without a safety net, but on a creative side, this is much more fun because usually, like if you don't see it and you cannot correct it, that's the purest photography. Of course, sometimes if I see something and it's very important and very composed, then I'm checking it. But I try to bring me to situations where I do not do that, just to, you know, get better on planning my shot, on setting my parameters and actually knowing more what I'm doing. And yeah, that helped my photography and that helped me also in my life because it, make me, it made me more self-conscious about, uh, about my photography. That's it for this video. If you liked it, please like and subscribe. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions about rangefinder cameras. I'm happy to answer them. Also let me know if there are any topics you'd like me to make videos about. Stay curious. See you next time.